So I just watched the movie Awake, the 2021 Netflix original. Not to be confused with Awake, the 2007 film starring Hayden Christensen and Jessica Alba. Also not to be confused with Awake, the 2012 series starring Jason Isaacs. Also not to be confused with Awake, the 2019 movie starring Jonathan Rhys Myers. This one's in 2021 and it's called Awake. It's not any of those other movies, it's it's this one. It's this Awake. All right, so I'll be honest. The concept, the idea, it was interesting. I'll give it that. The movie, however, yeah, you know, it's a Netflix movie, so. It's not good. Now, if you've seen my review on the Netflix original Spiderhead, I will say that this movie is better and worse than that one. It's better in concept. I think the idea is much more interesting, but the movie itself is, you know, it's worse. And that's mainly because of the direction. Now, the writing doesn't help this either, but the movie ends up coming off as very disjointed. The timeline just doesn't feel correct. And I found myself pretty confused as to how many days it's been. You could maybe argue that this is part of the movie, but I would argue that it's not. It's just poorly planned out. It feels like scenes were removed without anything replacing. The directing also feels pretty mediocre. Now, there are a few scenes in this movie that are shot pretty nicely, and I will give it credit for the scenes that are shot really well. There's a car accident scene that I think is shot really well, and then there's another scene of people trying to attack the car, which I feel like was inspired a lot from the movie Children of Men, which, like I've said in the past, if you're gonna borrow, borrow from the best. So I understand why they drew inspiration from such a great scene. Other than that, I feel like the shots were uninspired. They felt like I was watching an ABC weekly drama Everything just felt so plain. The lighting was very minimalistic. The line delivery was usually stiff and robotic at times. Where is she? I understand you could argue that it's maybe just the character that's robotic, but it doesn't come off that way. Anyway, let's get into it. I am going to be spoiling this whole movie and there really isn't much to talk about afterwards. So if you really want to watch this movie, I would skip, you know, until when I thank you at the end. One, spoilers. So yeah, this movie, it's about not being able to sleep. That's what it's about. There's some world ending event that occurs that stops anyone's ability to fall asleep. And everyone is slowly going to die from sleep deprivation. At one point they're giving knockout gas to people and it's not doing anything. It's explained in the movie that because our bodies have electricity in them, that whatever event occurred also knocked out our ability to fall asleep. So yeah, nothing will allow human beings to fall asleep. They describe it as you're either on, awake, or off, dead. Again, like I said, it's a pretty interesting concept. The issue is obviously just the execution, the script, the directing, and all that other good stuff that, you know, ultimately makes a movie enjoyable. So the movie starts with our main character. Her name's Jill. She's stealing pills from a medical facility where she works. Now, Jill is the mother of two children, Matilda and Noah, who live with her mother. It is revealed that she doesn't have custody of her children because she's recovering from, I guess, a drug problem. So after she steals the pills, she goes and sells them immediately to a drug dealer really not painting the picture that she is a great person. She picks up her kids from the house to spend some time with them. She's driving down the street with her children and that's when this event occurs. And this event knocks out all technology in the world, which disables their car and causes them to have a car accident. Their car gets knocked into the lake and this is probably the best scene in the whole movie. This car accident scene really looks realistic. They're stuck in the car and they're trying to get out and the car's filling with water. And like I said, it just comes across really good. So after the car accident, Jill and Noah swim to the surface. They see that Matilda Matilda was rescued by a police officer, but she's okay and everyone's fine. They eventually make it back home, and that night, no one is able to fall asleep. The idea that on the first day following the night of everyone not being able to sleep, the world turns upside down is to me a little far-fetched. But for the movie's sake, I can concede to that. I can see people being anxious about this issue. I mean, all the electronics did get knocked out from some mysterious global event. It's very possible that a lot of people would be thinking that we're at war with another country. So I definitely could see the population being on edge. But it's really within the next day is when things start to happen that I just don't understand. So the following day, the grandma takes Matilda to church and it's revealed that Matilda is able to sleep and no one else is. Now granted, it's only been one night, but people in this church are going crazy. Like it's been days, weeks even. I understand that you wouldn't last for weeks, but what I'm saying is usually in a scenario where the world is ending, it takes a few days for people to really start acting irrationally. I don't believe that just one night without sleep, you're going to be considering sacrificing a child, which is what they're considering doing in this scene. But, you know, 
what do I know? The revelation that Matilda can sleep definitely builds my interest. If it wasn't given away in the trailer, I'd probably be even more interested in this, but you know, that's what trailers do. They give things away. So the pastor's giving a service where everyone just seems on edge. He then goes back into the room where Matilda is sleeping and he has a weird conversation with her about how he used to do heroin and he like shows her his track marks that he covered up with a tattoo. <laughs> like it's just so weird. It just seems like a really odd conversation to have with a little girl. Again, you could argue that it's because of his lack of sleep that he's weird, but I don't, I don't know. It's kind of strange, dude. The first thing I think when I see a little kid is like, yo, you want to hear about heroin? <laughs> you want to hear how heroin works? <laughs> it's, it's weird, dude. <laughs> He also details how he overdosed once and was dead for a minute. <laughs> this is a little girl, dude. <laughs> he also goes into detail about how he overdosed once and was even dead for a full minute. Now, like I said, this girl is extremely young. This person may be telling this girl these things for the first time. She may not even know what this stuff means. And this guy's just like, hey, do you want to hear about how heroin almost killed me once? It just seems very inappropriate to go into this much detail about overdosing to a child. But what, you know, but what do I know, I guess? Maybe this is a common occurrence in church. I don't really go to church anymore anyway, so maybe it's changed since last time I've been. So anyway, after he explains how much heroin he used to do. <laughs> So anyway, after he explains how much heroin he used to do, he makes a comment that is a, a roundabout way of maybe suggesting that they should consider sacrificing the little girl in order to save everyone. Now, granted, he's the one that ultimately says we shouldn't do this, but it's still a direction that his brain goes. The rest of the congregation, however, they're completely on board with sacrificing this little girl. Like this woman. We should sacrifice her? No. God sacrificed Jesus, his own son, to save us. I'm willing to be Pontius Pilate and condemn the Robert, girl. Robert, sit down. What are you saying? This dude has been awake for only 36 hours, and he's already considering sacrificing a little girl. What do you... It's been one night that you can't sleep. I don't know what it is, but there's something about Netflix movies and having zero subtlety when it comes to building tension. They always want to jump right into the heavier elements without building any foundation for viewers to care about. So some of this stuff just ends up coming completely out of nowhere. The ideas that the movie portrays aren't bad, but they are just done so terribly that it's so laughable. I could absolutely see a world going crazy, even within a few days of not being able to sleep. But it's been one night and they're trying to imply they need to sacrifice this little girl. I'm not religious, but I do feel like it's pretty common practice for most religions to, you know, not murder children. So anyway, back with Jill, it's revealed that the military is setting up a facility and they already have one person who has been able to fall asleep. Eventually, they try to encourage Jill to bring Matilda to this facility so they can run tests on her to try to figure out why she's able to sleep. Jill is obviously reluctant about this and doesn't want her daughter to be a test subject. So it's been one day and people are looting. Looting implies survival long-term. These people can't sleep. I understand that they're looting a pharmacy for sleeping medication, but again, it's been one night. Personally, I feel most people would just be very tired, not wanting to do anything. They wouldn't be thinking, we're all gonna die because we haven't been able to sleep. I don't think people will be jumping to the conclusion on the first day that they will never be able to sleep again, and what they need to do is go to the pharmacy, break windows, and steal controlled substances. I I just don't think that is how most people's brains work. But in this movie, that's what they do. So back at the church, we still have this congregation that is heavily considering murdering the little girl. Instead of wanting to just ask her questions and say like, hey, what did you do yesterday? What happened? What did you do differently yesterday? What are some things that I can maybe try to help me sleep? They're just like, no, murder her because that's what God wants. He wants her dead. And again, you could say they're all making terrible decisions because they're just so tired. They didn't sleep last night guys they're so tired they should kill this little girl because they didn't sleep oh my god one night no sleep murder people jill then comes back and kind of sees what's happening and demands that they give her back her child which they do not at this point the scientist is trying to calm everyone down and say hey there's a facility that we're doing tests everybody we can figure this out together there's no need to murder a little girl so they throw this book and it hits this dude in the face and everyone's like nah so they kill him <laughs> So the cop pulls out his revolver and he shoots the dude in the back of the head. Because of course he does. He's tired, guys. He didn't get any sleep last night. So this police officer is just going to murder a civilian. A civilian who works for the government. 
He didn't get any sleep, guys. It makes sense. So it's at this point where Noah goes through the pockets of the scientist and finds the address of the facility that he was referring to. Eventually, they all end up getting away from the mob. It's at this point where they kind of split up. She ends up going to the mechanic shop where she sold the drugs to earlier. It's in here where she encounters two people who are in the process of killing the owner of the shop and stealing the last few cars that are there. It is revealed that only older cars with no electronics will work, and all they have to do is switch out the batteries. To me, this just reminds me of the movie War of the Worlds. That's almost exactly what happened, except it wasn't the batteries, it was spark plugs. So Jill is able to hide out long enough to where she can steal a car and meet back up with Matilda and Noah. So while Jill is getting the car, Noah and Matilda have this super cringy conversation. I'd say it's definitely the worst of the movie. I have no idea why it's even in the movie. It's probably the movie's attempt to be funny, but it just comes off as weird. It's strange to me that the movie makes a 12 to 15 year old girl say these lines. Did you guys ever do it? Everything okay? Noah's never had sex. I, I have. It adds nothing. It's not funny. It's not clever. It's just weird. If they would have left it at just do what? it, I'd probably not even mention it. But then she says this. Noah's never had sex. What writer wrote this line and said, you know what? This line's gonna slap. Netflix, stop doing this. Stop writing this kind of dialogue. It's weird. Out of all the craziness that is happening around the world, this is what the movie thinks these two people would be and should be talking about right now. Okay, bro. Three people wrote this movie. Three people. So one of these three people wrote conversation here about weird sh So after that conversation, they're driving and they're driving and they're driving and time passes to where it's nighttime and they come across this car that is all shot up and there's two people dead inside. And you know what? It's the same two people from the garage earlier. Somehow, these characters drove the exact same route as these two random strangers and came across their dead bodies. I'm fine with them coming across a car that's shot up. That's a pretty interesting element, but you couldn't hire two different actors. You couldn't hire two different people to portray these dead bodies. This adds nothing to the movie. The characters do comment that they're gonna follow a truck that probably has medical supplies. So I guess it's to imply that they followed the truck and the truck killed them here. They are on a dark, dimly lit road in the middle of nowhere and Jill, Matilda and Noah are on the same path that that truck was going on. These cars could have gone in any direction even if they're going to the same general vicinity. There are so many roads in the world. Like It just doesn't make any sense that they would somehow come across these same two people. To me it just stands out as lazy. Just hire two new actors. You can still have the same situation. You can still paint it as they were killed by the military or whatever you're trying to do. I go to the same supermarket every day and I never see the same people twice unless they work there. Do you get what I'm saying? The idea that you would bump into the same two people hundreds of miles away from where you first saw them is stupid. It's not like they came across each other in a place where everyone was convening and there's tons of people here. They're literally on a back road in the middle of nowhere. How do writers think things like this make sense? This is just something that would never happen. Anyway, they keep driving and they're obviously getting super tired. So they pull over and Jill takes a dump in the woods while leaving the car running. Not only should you probably be worried about gas, but you left the lights on and you have a running car. Don't you think people want your running car? Don't you think it's pretty stupid to be showing people that you have a running car? It's just, it's things like this that anyone with a brain in these actual scenarios would be considering. And our characters characters don't think of it. I understand that they might not be thinking clearly. I've already said this, but this is a very basic thought process. So anyway, they leave their car running with their lights on and they just sit here and have a conversation. They're just talking, you know. Next, we see a scene with a bunch of naked people in the middle of the road. I guess it's meant to imply that they're all delusional and the best thing they could all collectively think to do was to get naked and stare at the sunrise. It's weird. There's an old man ass and a pair of boobs and it's weird. Next, they go into a library to find a map. While in the library, Jill takes this opportunity to explain to her daughter that she needs to learn how a card catalog works because there's no more technology 
and if she's ever in a library again, she's going to need to know how to find her books. However, within having this conversation, she says, you know what, you need to learn how to use a gun instead. I'm going to shoot this gun, and you're going to learn from it. She hands this little girl a loaded weapon and says, you have to shoot the gun. And Matilda's like, mom, I don't want to shoot a gun. And Joel's like, you have to shoot the gun. And Matilda's like, mom, but I don't want to shoot the gun. And Joel's like, fine, I'll shoot the gun, and you'll retain the knowledge of shooting. So Jill shoots the gun and wastes ammunition for some stupid reason. I'm sure that won't be necessary later. Matilda's like, oh, I learned how to use a gun now. I have all the skills. Now it's in this scene where they say that it's been four days without sleep, but I don't see how that checks out. And I've watched this movie a few times to see if I messed up, but no. So they slept the night before the car accident. Car accident happens, they can't sleep that night. The next day they go to church, she takes a dump. That's when they find the bodies on the road. That's the second night. And now we're at the library. How is that four days? Tell me, where's the fourth day? It just doesn't make any sense. And I don't like it and I hate it. This is one of those movies that just doesn't care about your critical thinking ability. If you are going to think about things, don't watch this movie. Don't do it. It's not going to reward you. It's not going to allow you to feel good about yourself. I'm okay with the idea of them being awake for four days. Maybe have them camp out in a gas station and then show them getting some gas. It's things like this where you just are thinking like you're driving a muscle car hundreds of miles and you never need to get gas once. Why is Netflix so bad at writing movies? Is it because they encourage the screenwriters to just write it as fast as possible and get it out? Pump it, pump it, pump it. Is that what it is, guys? Is it because they won't pay over a certain dollar amount so they're only left with mediocre scripts? It's not like these movies aren't shot to a certain standard. It's not like they don't put hundreds of millions of dollars into their stupid movies. Why can't they just sit down and write a decent script? I'm getting off topic. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm gonna settle down. So anyway, while they're in the library, apparently on day four, they notice on the road that all these prisoners are just walking on the street. So they hurry back to the car where they left Matilda sleeping in there for some reason. Out of all the places to have Matilda sleep, she goes back to the car and sleeps in the car. You're inside a library. I'm sure there's couches in there. I'm sure there's a carpeted floor. You go back to the car, alone as a 12, 13, 14 year old girl, not to mention that she is able to sleep. Like you just had people that wanted to kill her because of her ability to sleep and you let her sleep in your only means of transportation. These are things that just don't make any sense. So anyway, they run back to the car as they see it pulling away because of course it gets stolen. So after they see the car pull away, there's a group of prisoners that come walking up to them demanding that Jill give Noah to them. This dude's just like, give me that boy. You can leave girl, just give me the boy. He <laughs> just wants the young boy. I understand what they're going for here. It just comes off really stupid. When this scene happened, it just made me laugh. It didn't build any tension. I didn't care at all. It was just stupid. So anyway, the inmates start advancing on her and she fires a warning shot, which turns out to be the only bullet she had left in the gun, probably because she was using the gun for target practice in a library for zero reason. Maybe she's just so tired that she forgot that bullets are limited. So anyway, it's the last shot. So you know what that means. The inmates are coming for that boy, but in the last Last second, the car comes back around because lucky for them, their car was stolen by the only inmate who was a good guy. So they jump into the car and drive away until they finally come across this plane. It's also finally mentioned that they need gas. So they see this tractor and they're gonna siphon the gas out of the tractor. I guess they got gas off screen all those other times and they didn't have to siphon it. So Jill takes this opportunity to teach Matilda how to siphon gas because Jill believes that she is definitely gonna die. Now, Jill decides to just let her daughter suck on this hose with little instruction as to how to prevent her from swallowing gas. That's smart. The next scene is Jill teaching her daughter how to drive the car. This is the scene where Dodge starts talking about how the earth might be flat, but because it's written in books that the earth is not flat, it's not flat. So he thinks we should burn all the books and then humanity can reset all the things it thinks it knows. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to like this guy or not like this guy. This conversation makes him seem like an idiot. Guys, he's just so tired, he's just saying dumb things. He doesn't have to make sense because he's tired. So after the science talk about how flat the earth is, they come across this big pile of metal that's blocking the road. It also looks like they come across these cannibals who are eating people and torturing them. This is also the scene that I will say reminded me a lot of Children of Men. It's pretty intense. I honestly thought they were going to get taken here because of how realistic 
big it seems, but they end up getting away. So it's at this point where they get to an area just outside the hub to where the military is set up. Jill gives the car to Dodge and leaves the children at this safe house while she plans to infiltrate the base to see if it's safe for Matilda. It's at this point that Jill sneaks into this heavily guarded facility pretty easily, and we'll just go with that. I doubt they would leave the underside of this bridge so exposed, especially with all these soldiers they have laying around. So Jill is able to infiltrate the facility and poses a doctor so that she can gain access to the patient who is able to sleep. It is discovered that she is a terminally ill patient and she says that she should have been dead weeks ago, but they're keeping her alive. It's in this conversation that Jill's motives are revealed. Her idea was to connect with this woman and free her so that she could raise Matilda once Jill dies. I will say that's an interesting twist that I definitely did not see coming. And then once she realizes that the woman is terminally ill, obviously that throws a wrench in her plan. While she's having this conversation with the woman, Dr. Murphy, Jill's old boss, comes into the room, but Jill is able to play it off like she came here to help. It's at this moment that Dodge comes back with the kids as a peace offering to the military so they will accept him and hopefully allow him to join them so he can survive. Once they realize Matilda can sleep, they obviously begin testing on her to try to figure out why. While they're testing on her, the old woman dies, meaning that Matilda is the last person alive that they know of who can sleep. Pretty much by now, they're out of time. They're all being kept awake by shooting adrenaline directly into their neck, and it starts causing these people to go crazy. Because of the lack of sleep, they all start envisioning that they're being attacked by an outside force, when really they are just seeing each other with guns and thinking they're the enemy. So at this point, the military just turns on each other and they all shoot each other to death. Next we see Noah, he's cutting this electrical wire with a knife because he's hallucinating that he's gutting a fish with his dad. So he obviously gets electrocuted and dies in front of Jill and Matilda. Matilda hurries to grab the defibrillator that she saw the doctors using on the old woman. They try to resuscitate Noah, but it doesn't seem to work until it does. In the morning, they realize that he's actually sleeping and not dead. Matilda then puts it together that you must have to die first in order for your body to reset. Pretty much like unplugging your router and then plugging it back in to make it work. Because our bodies are like computers and stuff. Duh. Matilda also puts together that she must have drowned in the lake earlier in the movie and when she was resuscitated, it immediately reset her body. So they figure the only way they can save their mom is to drown her in a lake. I have to say, this is probably one of the worst ways you can kill someone, especially someone who you love and who you're planning on bringing back. You literally have a defibrillator sitting in the other room. If you just use that on someone who's alive, it'll stop their heart. Maybe they don't think of this because they're kids, but no, they choose to just drown their mom. Maybe it's supposed to symbolize like a baptism, I don't know. So they do it. They drown their mom. They then attempt to resuscitate her, which you assume they are successful at because the very last sound of the movie is Jill gasping for breath. <gasps> and that's the end. They all died and they all came back and now they're all gonna live forever with no one around. Yeah, this movie isn't good. Reading all this back, I remember how not good it was. Honestly, I think they shouldn't have found a way to fix it. I actually think they should have went darker with it. Instead of it being just one person that can sleep at the facility, they should have come across a group of people who were able to sleep and maybe they end up raising Matilda instead. I understand that this mom is the main character, but they didn't really paint her as a good mom in the beginning of the movie. Maybe that's so she could have a better arc of redeeming herself, but to me, I don't think you had to make her a drug dealer. It just seems like a way to disassociate your audience with the main character instead of giving them an obstacle to overcome. I'll just chalk it up to another movie written for Netflix that the writers put in a solid 30% of effort into making sure it made sense. This movie is ultimately just a waste of time, as most Netflix originals are. So yeah, if you want to be frustrated and give an hour and a half of your life to another bad Netflix movie, then watch it. I don't give a frick. I don't like saying a movie is bad, especially one that people put some effort into, because that implies that no one will like it. And I'm sure there are people out there that would like this movie. However, I'll say that it's just very not good and I will never watch it again. So yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you made it to the end, I would super appreciate a subscription. We are halfway to 100 subscribers. I'm trying to do 100 subscribers in 100 days and, you know, we're on path to do that. We just need to double what we got. So, you know, let's start doubling it. If you've seen this movie, leave a comment. I'm very curious. Thanks again, as always, guys, and I will see you in the next one.